Hey everyone, we're going to wrap up the polynomials unit with this uh, lesson on polynomial applications, or you could call these word problems with polynomials. Uh, first example is what I'd like to call the graph analysis type, which means once you get the equation for whatever they're describing, then you just simply put it into the graphing calculator and you find what they're asking for. So this one's probably one of the harder ones you would find because they're not giving you the equation, you have to come up with it. So let's read. A box with an open top is to be constructed from a square piece of cardboard, three meters wide by cutting a square from each of the four corners and bending up the sides. So um, like I said, this is a little more difficult than your typical one that you might have on a test, but um, first we wanna draw a picture of the square cardboard that we're gonna make the box out of. Okay, so we draw that. Now, if we cut out corners from this box, okay, like that, and we don't know really how big these corners are going to be that we're going to cut out, so we're going to call that X, okay, and the original dimension of this cardboard was 3 meters, and it was square, so 3 meters on this side. All right, now, if you can picture that, once those squares are cut out, we're going to fold this cardboard on these red dotted lines. And if we do that, we will then get a box. And if it looks something like what I drew, then it will be not very tall box, but a little bigger in the other directions. Okay, so it looks something like that. Okay. All right, now we need the dimensions of this box. Um, because later on, part B, we're going to be asked to find the volume. So to find the volume, we're going to need the dimensions. So this side of the box here is basically this dimension on the cardboard. So if we started off with 3 meters and we subtracted a distance of x when we cut the square out and another distance of x on the other side, this would now be 3 minus x minus x or 3 minus 2x. And because the other dimension is the same, because it's a square box or a square piece of part cardboard, we would also get 3 minus 2x. So these dimensions on the box, once you fold up those sides, would both be 3 minus 2x. Now, the height of the box is going to be basically this distance here, because when that side gets folded up, it's this dimension. And that we don't know, we called it x, so our height is going to be x. All right, part B, we're now going to write an equation for the volume of this box, given the dimensions we wrote down. So if you recall, for a rectangular prism, fancy word for box, um, the volume is length times width times height. So we know our length is 3 minus 2x, our width also 3 minus 2x, and yes, you could write that as 3 minus 2x in brackets squared, and then times the height, which is x. Now, you do not have to expand this if we're going to just solve it graphically. If we're solving something algebraically, if we knew the volume, then yes, you would. And there's another way to find um, part D out when they ask you for maximum volume, but uh, that would involve calculus, which we're not going to do in the 30-1 uh, course. Okay, so really, have we got it? Let's read the question. State a cubic polynomial expression. This would be cubic because it's multiplicity of 1 here, okay, and I could write this like this, 3 minus 2x squared times x, that would be fine, or clean it up even more and write the x in front, and then I don't need brackets around it, like that. Okay, uh, in terms of x, the side length, blah, 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 I recall the, okay, so we're good, this is our answer. All right, now state the restrictions on x. Part of the reasons why, why we want to do that is so that we can figure out our win window settings when we go to the graphing calculator. But restrictions on x, since x was defined as the size of the square cut out from each of the corners, that means we wouldn't, if we're cutting a square out of the corner to make a box, we wouldn't be able to cut more than half the side length. Otherwise, we would basically be cutting the entire box away. So in other words, x has to be less than 1.5 meters, which is basically half of the side length in this situation. Okay, now there's also a reality on uh, what the x could be, and 
we would have to cut something out of each corner to actually make a box. So x also has to be greater than 0. Okay, now that will help us with our window settings when we go to put this in the graphing calculator. Okay, so part D, here we go, using the graphing calculator, determine the maximum possible volume of the box. So we're going to grab our graphing calculators, we're going to put this equation in Y1, and we're going to figure out the maximum. Our window settings, we know this is going to be our X min, 0, and this will be our X max setting. Okay, the Y we're going to have to play around with a bit so that we can see the graph, and that's unfortunately a reality for all of these. So let's grab the graphing calculator and put that in Y1. Set your windows. Okay, so we've got our equation in Y1. We're going to window settings. We've set X min and X max to 0 and 1.5. Scale, doesn't really matter what you set your scale to be. That's just saying how often the tick marks are on the X axis. Y min, now Y is like our V right? So volume of this box can't be any less than um, zero. So that's why our Y min here is set to zero. Y max, um, it's probably going to be bigger t than 10, but let's take a look at the graph. Okay. Oh, well, there you go. No, it wasn't. So um, that means we could probably even make our Y max a little less, like maybe even five to get a better graph showing up. And there we go. All right. Now they want the maximum possible volume. Remember, volume is your y value, so you're looking for the maximum y value here. To do that, it's just like with quadratic functions from 20-1. You want to go to second calc number 4, maximum, and then you have to tell the calculator where to look for this. So you go left of where you think it is. Make sure you're far enough left. Okay. Hit enter, and then go right of where you think it is and hit enter, and then for guess, just hit enter again. So you're basically telling the calculator to look between those two values. So we get uh, coordinates 0 0.5 comma 2, but the most important part is the y value there. So as a result, we know that the maximum y value, or in our case, the maximum volume, would equal 2. Now the question is, what would the units be? Our dimension was in meters, so this would be meters cubed. Awesome, let's take a look at the next example. Okay, example two, solve equation graphically type. So in this one, it's slightly different. Before we had just an equation for volume and we were finding the maximum within a certain uh, domain. This one, we're given a volume or a value of the y, and we're going to put that into, say, y1, and then the equation that it is equal to will go in y2, and we find out where they cross. So that's kind of the game plan. But first of all, we need to kind of set this up. So um, we have a serial box, again, rectangular prism with a volume of 2,500 centimeters cubed. It's four times as wide as it is deep, five centimeters taller than it is wide. What are the dimensions of the box? So let's draw a picture here. Always a good place to start. Here's our serial box. Okay. Call this Smarty O's, okay? Um, and they want label the dimensions in terms of x, the depth of the box. So we're going to make the depth of the box x, mostly because it's kind of referring to things in terms of x. So it's four times as wide as it is deep, the depth. So the width here, therefore, would be four times x, so four x. And then they tell you that the height, or how tall it is, is five centimeters taller than it's wide. So it was 4x wide, so this would be 4x plus 5 tall. Okay, so we've got that labeled. Then part B states, state a cubic polynomial expression for the volume of the box. So once again, volume equals length times width times height. So we go length, um, well, we'll call that 4x, let's say. The width or the depth would be x, and the height would be 4x plus 5. We could simplify that a little bit before we're going to put that in the calculator. 4x times x, 4x squared, and 4x plus 5 in brackets. And that way we don't have uh, so many brackets to put into the calculator. So time to grab the calculator. We're going to put this equation here in y1. And then we got to play with the windows a bit to see if we can see the graph. And logically speaking, x would have to be greater than, let's see what our restrictions, x would have to be greater than 0. 
and we don't really have a maximum on that one, so we'll go with that. And the volume would have to be greater than zero. So that makes our x min zero and our y min also zero. Okay, so we can set that up. And probably a good place to start with Windows is go zoom standard and then modify them after that. Let's grab the calculator. Okay, we've got the equation in y1 and we've got our window settings to that. Now there's one little crucial thing that we are forgetting. It said using the graphing calculator and the given volume. What given volume you, you ask? Well in the question the volume that was given up in the question here was 2500 centimeters cubed. See this? So we are going to actually really what we're trying to do then is solve when V is 2500. So in Y1 we put this, right? But in Y2 we are going to put 2500. Okay, which means, let's go back to Y equals, in Y2 we're putting 2500. Now, that is our Y value. So let's think about this. For Y max, if that's our Y value, we need to be way above that. So, well, not way above it, but we need to be above it. <laughs> so, I don't know, 3,000, 5,000, somewhere in there should work. So, let's say we go 3,000. And that way we'll be able to see that line. We could change our scale, say, to, I don't know, 1,000 or something. So, our axis doesn't look like a caterpillar. Okay. And there we go. We can see our graph. This looks great. And if we can't, we just need to keep readjusting until we do. So we want to find where 2500 is our volumes, which, in other words, where these cross. So second calc, intersect, number five, and first curve. Just hit enter on this one. Don't move around. See that equation came up? That's the one we want. Second curve automatically jumps to the other one, 2500. Great. And guess, just hit enter. As long as there's only one, it will find it. So there we go, 5, 2,500. So um, our point, 5, 2,500, our x value was the 5. So determine the value of x, that would be 5. The dimensions of the box, therefore, would be 5, and it was centimeters cubed, I believe, for volume. So 5 centimeters by 4 times 5. So this was x, and then this would be 4x, so that'd be 20 centimeters. Okay, and then my x's look like multiply, times 4x plus 5 was the height, so that would be 25 centimeters. And there we go, that would be our dimensions of the cereal box. Awesome. So really, I think the hardest part about this is probably figuring out the window settings. So that's really what's going to get you. Um, the first question here, I'll give you a little hint. I would make y max equal to, wait for it, 100,000, just to get you started on that one. Okay. So, and just look at the numbers otherwise. If I have a product of 840, that probably means y max is going to have to be a thousand. Okay. If I have for like the last question, I have a y value of 0 0.09. Okay. That would, we'd probably want our y max to be, uh, I don't know, 0. 0, 1 maybe. Okay, so keep adjusting until you can see the graph and good luck with that. I hope everyone does well and you can do the assignment right on here. Well, actually you'll need room on the piece of paper, but okay, and then we should be ready for our test. Good job everybody.